buck up, buck up, buck up, buck up, buck up. <laughs> you know the deal. So what we're going to be talking about today is an introduction to relations. And in order to introduce relations, the first question we'll probably want to ask ourselves is, what is a relation? Well, for our purposes, uh, we're going to define a relation as a mathematical relationship between two or more pieces of information. And in grade 9, we're really just dealing with two pieces of information. So the first example uh, of a relation that we're going to look at is the relationship between the length of a square and its perimeter. So suppose we have a square and the length is one centimeter. And I'll just put one. Won't include the unit here. Well, if the length is one centimeter, of course, to calculate the perimeter of a square, we just add up all the sides. So th the perimeter would be four centimeters. Um, another example is if the length was two centimeters, then of course the perimeter would be eight centimeters because two plus two plus two plus two is eight. If the length was three centimeters, the perimeter would be twelve centimeters. Uh, another way to look at this relationship is really to calculate the perimeter here if we have a square is w we take the length and we multiply it by four. So if we were going to write that relationship uh, in an English sentence, uh, we could say perimeter is four times the length. Well, as we saw when we were dealing with our introduction to algebra, uh, oftentimes what we want to do is we want to take a sentence like this and translate it from an English sentence into a math sentence. So we need to translate each piece at a time here. So let's start with perimeter. Well, we don't really have a standard symbol to use for perimeter, uh, so we can choose a variable there. And, and the fact is, is here we can see that the perimeter does vary. It does change, and it changes depending on what the length is. So let's start by calling the perimeter y. So I might write something like, let y be the perimeter. Uh, the word is usually translates into equals. And then we have four times the length. Well, again, the length is another variable. That's another piece of information that varies. We see that over here. So I'm going to call that x. I might write something like let x represent the length. And to write four times x, we would write that as 4x. So our equation for this relationship is y equals 4x, where y is the perimeter and x is the length. Another example of a mathematical relationship that involves two pieces of information is uh, it, usually when you get your first job, you get paid by the hour. So suppose we have a job and we get paid $12 per hour. Well, of course, to calculate our total pay, if we want to know what our total pay is, we would multiply 12 times the number of hours. So again, if I want to write this in a math sentence, um, we have to use some variables here. The first one we're going to write is a uh, total pay. That's going to be represented by a variable. And again, I'll start by choosing y. So I might say let y represent uh, the total pay. Is, we write as equals. And then I have 12 times the number of hours. Well, number of hours will vary. So uh, I'm going to choose a variable for that. Let's say x. And if I want to write 12 times x, then it's 12x. So this is another example of a mathematical relationship between two pieces of information, uh, the, the total number of hours uh, and our total pay. And of course, our total pay will depend on the number of hours. So if I were to construct a table of values for this relationship, like I did with the last one with the length and the perimeter, um, rather than using the actual words here, I'll just use the variables here. So I'll, I'll, I'll put x for the number of hours and, and y for the total pay. So I if I work zero hours, well, of course, we'll get paid zero dollars, as with most jobs. Um, if I work one hour, we would get paid twelve dollars. Two hours, twenty-four dollars. Uh, we could jump up to, say, ten hours, and that would be a hundred and twenty dollars. So this table here is showing the relationship between the number of hours and the total pay. Uh, X, of course, represents the number of hours, and Y represents the total pay. 
So if we just take a look at the two examples that we've done so far, the first relationship was a perimeter related to the length of the side of a square. And the, the equation that we came up with was y equals 4x, where we translated this sentence. Now, if we look at this relationship, of course, we can say that the perimeter depends on the length, uh, because the perimeter will change as the length change changes. When you write a sentence out like this, this tells you which one of these variables is the dependent variable. Perimeter was represented by y. Since perimeter depends on the length, we call y the dependent variable. So in this case, y is the dependent variable. And since y is the dependent variable, well, the opposite of dependent would be independent. So we would say that x is the independent variable. With the next example, uh, as I said when we were working through this, um, total pay, which is y in this case, depends on the number of hours. So we would say then that y is the dependent variable in the second example, just like in the first example. So again, since total pay depends on the number of hours, we say y is the dependent variable, because y represents the total pay. And once again, uh, x, since y is the dependent variable, the opposite of dependent is independent. So that means that x is the independent variable. And I've used the variables x and y on purpose. And these are uh, variables that we're going to use a lot in class. And, and most of the time, y is going to be the dependent variable, and x is going to be the independent variable. And you'll notice in both of these equations, the y is by itself. It, it can get a little bit confusing, because uh, the y is typically on its own in these types of equations. Uh, and it's on its own, but it's called dependent, whereas x usually has some math being done to it. So here, m x is being multiplied by 12. Here, x is being multiplied by 4. Even though it has some stuff with it, uh, because y depends on x, x is the independent variable, and y is the dependent variable. So to finish off our introduction to relations, uh, I want you to do one task. So here, we've got a situation where uh, a dance charges $25 per student. So we've got a situation where we've got two pieces of information that relate to each other mathematically. We've got the number of students that are going to attend the dance and how much money is earned. So the first thing I want you to do is write an equation that relates the total earnings of the dance with the number of students who attend. And then create a table of values, just like we did for uh, the length and perimeter example and for the uh, number of hours worked and total pay example. Uh, in this case, though, it'll be number of students and uh, total earning. And for number of students, I want you to use 0, 10, 20, 30, and 40 students. And then finally, identify the dependent and independent variables in this situation. If you're able to do that, congratulations. You now have a firm understanding of an introduction to relations.